Minneapolis, a place known for speed. And tonight, inside historic Hinkle Fieldhouse, UConn women's basketball looks to get off to another blazing quick start as they take on the Butler Bulldogs in Big East play, the first of a two-game road trip. And hello from courtside with Megan Pumo. I'm Alan Bestwick. Maria Marino joins us shortly. Well, this season of... What next has another chapter to it tonight for the Yukon Huskies. Rising to fifth in the Associated Press rankings in the most recent poll. Adding a player back, Aubrey Griffin returning to the lineup tonight. But then the news that Caroline Ducharme would not play tonight or Thursday at Xavier by after being placed in concussion protocol. And Gito Oriema is not going to coach the Husky team tonight after feeling unwell uh, during the afternoon today. How many more body blows can this team take and how are they successfully managing to keep running through it? I give the, the, these kids and these coaches and everyone in this program a lot of credit. I mean, they've been through a ton of adversity, but, you know, you, this, you just have to deal with it. You know, and that old saying, which doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. And this group is strong, and they they are incredibly close. But the toll that, that you have to think about is what is it going to do to the starters? Look at the number of minutes. 84% of the minutes. And 89% of the points, look at that. Yeah. I mean, they don't have much of a bench, but you have to worry about the long-term effect of that on the starters. And especially now that we're into the heart, the real grind of the conference play season for UConn. They'll play with just eight players tonight. On the opposing sideline, the Butler Bulldogs, after going winless in Big East play a year ago, have brought in Austin Parkinson as their new head coach from across town at IUPUI. And the result is a whole different looking team. I mean, they've got six wins already. I mean, he a complete overhaul of the team. He's He knows he's got his work cut out for him, but he's an outstanding coach, X's and O's. Uh, the kids fight so hard for him. He's going to be very successful here. Good guy to talk to, and uh, he'll have a lot of talking to do to his team tonight as we look at our starting lineups presented by Subaru of New England. So with Ducharme on the sidelines, Aubrey Griffin's return puts her right into the starting five for UConn. And on the right side of the screen, keep an eye on 14, Rachel McLemore, and 5, Shea Frederick. Those are the two key players for Butler in this one. So, CD, the associate head coach, Chris Daly, will uh, be the head coach once again tonight. You see, remaining undefeated in uh, her subbing roles for Gino Oriema over the years. And as always, a pretty good crowd when UConn comes to town has turned out for the Huskies' third visit to Hinkle Fieldhouse. What a place for a basketball game. Yeah, it's the coolest <laughs> arena that we, we get to travel to, no doubt. So the Huskies in the road, national flag blue uniforms, Butler in the home whites, and we're underway in Indianapolis. Nika Mule will push the pace right away for UConn. Here's Lopez Seneschal with a three that misses. Griffin is able to track down the rebound. Huskies get another chance. Mule driving all the way to the bucket and in. Smart read there by Mule. So remember, keep an eye on 14, Rachel McLemore. Graduate transfer, came over with Coach Parkinson from IUPUI across town. And she has the ball in her hands now. Guarded by Griffin. There's Frederick. That's a three, no. Butler does throw up a lot of threes as part of their offensive structure. They're fourth in the league. They knocked down seven threes a game. There's going to be a three-second call inside on Aaliyah Edwards. Our keys to the game presented by Nissan. How about Lou Lopez Seneschal to nominate for that one? <laughs> this kid is unbelievable. I've never, in the you know the last 30 years, I've never seen a player come to the program and have an impact so quickly like Lopez Seneschal has. She's a great kid. The kids love her. But what a player. And as we discussed, so necessarily also. That was the sophomore Sidney James missing the turnaround jumper. One of the strengths for UConn so far in this last stretch of season has been strong starts. They did it to Butler here a year ago. As Dorothy Uhouse, no, missed that shot. And a rebound by Frederick. Well, Parkinson was worried about their lack of size on the interior. UConn has not made them pay. Tenley Dowell from the corner. That shot misses. Rebound slapped by James out of bounds out of the UConn. 
So a year ago when UConn came here to Indianapolis, they their defense held Butler to nine points in the first quarter while scoring 25. How much can things change in a year? UConn forced 27 turnovers and only committed seven all game. <laughs> <laughs> I need that draw a reaction from you. Oh, wow. Juhas trying to use her size advantage, couldn't handle the pass, and a turnover by UConn. Of course, turnovers being one of the main storyline correctable problems or items to correct for UConn. But when you saw that turnover there, that was a good play that Lee Edwards trying to get the ball downloaded to Juhas. Coaches can typically handle those types of turnovers. Into the paint, here's James, the sophomore. Guarded well by Griffin, who gets the block. Terrific defense by Aubrey Griffin. Just held her ground. Here's Edwards in the post. Drives and gets the lay-in. That's how good Aaliyah Edwards is this year. She didn't look to make that play last year, and now she's unstoppable. So a 4 nothing UConn lead. In the first two and a half minutes, inside to James, working on Juhas. Have to kick it back out. Scrandy will try again. James, turn around, up and down, blocked by Juhas. Well, really good to see Aubrey Griffin back in the lineup for UConn. Oh, she makes such a difference on this team. And they worked on that defensive sequence and shoot around today for the post players to not leave their feet. And then look at that, just square up. When she caught the ball, she knew. She got that ball in her right hip, and she knew she was going to the rim. So UConn two for four. Here is Juhas from way outside. That shot was short. Lopez Seneschal can't track it down. And a missed opportunity there for the Huskies. I'm not a fan of that, that quick three out of just a stand-up offense. If it's in the flow of the, the transition, okay, maybe. Uh, the corner has Wingler, no. And another rebound for UConn. They push. Well read pass, knocked away though. Couldn't pull it in by Caroline Strandy. And the Huskies will have it at midcourt. One of the things that, you know, we talked about UConn trying to take advantage of their size. One of the things that Austin Parkinson told us they might try and do for Butler is see if they can get some fouls inside and get some of UConn's thin bench in early trouble. There's a two for Lopez Seneschal. Yeah, we talked about it off the top. We know how thin UConn's roster is. If their post players or anyone really gets in foul trouble, that would be a huge problem. Strandy cut off by Griffin. Feeds it far side. Shot is long by Dowell. And Butler has yet to see the ball go through the basket. They need to shoot the ball well. Parkinson did, you know, stress that. You know, they shoot a lot of threes, but they have to make them against UConn. Edwards muscles under and up. And a timeout called by Butler. You got a Butler hero via that Well, another strong start for UConn with an eight-point early lead even though they're only four of seven from the floor and most of those shots from inside. Leah Edwards, long to the rim again. Just about halfway through quarter number one, eight, nothing UConn. Just steps away from where UConn just broke their huddle is Maria Marino. Thanks, Alan. For this UConn team, being shorthanded, though challenging, has allowed for some players to get experience that they might not have otherwise had. But according to Nika Mule, it's also helpful in another way, by getting in the habit of playing more discipline. She told me, for example, playing defense. We know we can't get into foul trouble because we have nobody else to put in. So we're careful, we're focused, and we can learn a lot from that to apply when we do have everyone back. I well, thought we were going to, the, the Huskies were going to add a piece tonight, but uh, then uh, Caroline Descharmes went into concussion protocol. So despite Aubrey Griffin's return, it's still just eight available players for UConn in this one. And Descharmes played so great over the weekend, and yeah, she, she played did. phenomenally in this building last year. Yes, she did. Shot clock down inside of ten. Now it's six. Macklemore finds a way to get Butler's first points of the night. Had to work hard for it. Love the step, the up and under, that little step through. 
Aubrey Griffin drives and gets it. Her explosiveness is just so fun to watch. So eight of UConn's ten points tonight have been in the paint. Jane's out of the ball game, 22. Rosemary Dumont is in for that post position for Butler. And down low, Kelsey Taylor trying to find a way to work around Griffin. No. Really good D again by Griffin. Mule pushes pace, speeds. Lopez Seneschal. No. I think Lopez Seneschal thought she was going to get fouled. Back from outside, gets the three to go. All five of Butler's points from the grad transfer from Zionsville, which is an Indianapolis suburb. She's their best three-point shooter. There's a three from Juhas, no. Aliyah Edwards with a strong offensive rebound. Gets away from the trap and the Huskies will reset it again. Edwards, yes. So Aaliyah Edwards already with six of the Huskies' 12 points. She is three for three from the floor with three rebounds and two assists. And all of her buckets were different. Steal from Lopez Seneschal. Feeds Griffin. Who gets the bucket? How about the just the strides down the floor by Griffin to catch up and make that a two-on-one? She's so quick, so fast, and just so fun to watch play. She's in great, great form just before the Christmas break. Of course, was away after getting ill during the time at home at Christmas. Back in the lineup tonight. She's defending the post player in the paint. That shot was strong and missed. Butler, one of five from outside. Edwards, no. Such a good move, too. Just couldn't get it to drop. Two of the three available subs for UConn are at the scorer's table waiting to check in. And it's Benton Court and Indiana's Anna Patterson. There's Dumont working against Juhas. That is going to be a turnover with steps. Really good anticipation there by Lopez Seneschal and, and the unselfish pass to the streaking Griffin. It was just so fluid. It's a thing of beauty. It's fun to watch, isn't it? So 14-5, Huskies by nine. I mentioned Diana Patterson in the ball game. She's from the Fort Wayne area, about a two-hour drive north of here. She has the ball, kicks the Benton cord. Cool. Offensive rebound. Edwards didn't get it to go. And that'll go out of bounds. And do UConn's basketball. Good hustle inside by Patterson. So there's the freshman. Former McDonald's All-American. Indiana missed basketball. Loose ball. Now that's going to be an offensive foul on, on Sydney James, right? So she got UConn switched defensively. So the shorter Nika, and I understand why Parkinson's upset. Nika Mule is short, and she's trying to work around. Well, the kid was just trying to post up. Well, just because Nika is shorter, and <laughs> the kid's elbow was in Nika Mule's neck. So yes, it was a foul. Lopez Seneschal with a nice move, but couldn't finish. Aaliyah Edwards with her offensive rebound. And she does finish. That's uh, eight for Aaliyah. She might be in double figure scoring before we get out of the first quarter in another minute and a half. There's Trinley White. Hands off to Tenley Dowell. Shea Frederick. Right to Right to Chris Daly. Good hands, coach. And the bench reaction. 
Let's not forget Chris Daly was a great player at Rutgers University. Ooh, look at she look at her. She knew to look down and see if she was in bounds or out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, fun stuff. A minute to go, opening quarter. Here is Patterson. The deep, the strong move to the bucket. Gets it, and a foul. Her reaction was the best. So happy, almost relieved. You know, the kid, look at that great pump fake. Gets yourself fouled. <laughs> it's been a struggle offensively for her yeah. thus far this season. Hadn't scored from the four in the last four games. So good to get that one. We talked at the, in the last game about how important it would be for her to, to get a couple of pockets as she missed the free throw. But look at Leah Edwards through three white shirted players. What about that? Wow. In the most complimentary way, she is just a beast in there. She cannot be stopped. Size mismatch inside. Probably not able to register it, and there's going to be a foul. Edwards will get fouled rather hard by Dowell. How about this for Leah Edwards? Not only is she now in double figure scoring, she's got seven rebounds. Four of them are offensive glass. It's just relentlessness. And Parkinson knows he needs, I mean, he loves to have a traditional post player like a five. Yeah. And he, he's going, trust me, he will recruit many of them. Newell for three. Brown and out. Patterson with the rebound. That's going to be a foul on her over the top. That was on the her athleticism as well. Gotta love that smile, though. We haven't seen that enough this year. Yeah. Yeah, fun to see her in the game early. Fun to see her have some scoring early. That's the first foul on UConn in the ballgame. Okay. Five seconds in the quarter. From the corner, a shot by Frederick. Is a three, and it goes. And that is how the quarter is going to end. Well, UConn holding Butler to 3 of 12 shooting from the floor, and Aaliyah Edwards just dominating in the paint in this opening quarter. UConn by a dozen after one. Historic Hinkle Fieldhouse, where UConn's women's basketball visits for just the third time ever. Strong opening quarter again for the Huskies, with a 12-point lead as we get ready to start the second. Cuomo's Court Vision, brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. Well, okay, on this free throw, Patterson shoots it. You see Aaliyah Edwards, right? Watch her push number 32, pushes her. The kid doesn't quite box enough, jumps straight up so she doesn't commit a foul. Terrific defense. Now look, there's no blue jerseys. She held the ball and then just wisely steps through. Look, the entire team was trying to stop her. And she, just such poise, wasn't in a hurry, maintained her composure, stepped through and finished. Look at that. Aaliyah Edwards outscored Butler single-handedly in that opening quarter. In fact, Aaliyah is the leading scorer, rebounder, and has the most assists on UConn through that first quarter. She deserves a break. And is getting one here to start the second. It is Mule, Betancourt, Patterson, Juhas, and Griffin, the five on the floor for UConn. I don't know how often we've seen this lineup out there for UConn. Maybe never. <laughs> that would be a safe bet. Five to shoot. Working her way in and getting a nice bucket with a tough finish. Trinity White, sophomore from the Dallas area. That was a really good finish. She didn't play against UConn a year ago after uh, being injured. There's Patterson. Mule left open, drives all the way to the bucket. No hesitation there for Mika Mule. Good recognition by Mule. She's got four already in the game. Inside, got behind. Patterson was Tenley down. Yeah, lack of communication there. 
by the Huskies on the defensive end. One of the things that was a point of emphasis has been a point of emphasis in the last couple of pregame shoot arounds is communicating defensively. Particularly for the younger players. There's Juhas double team. See, Mule's got to see that double team coming from the backside. Juhas cannot see that. Yukon by 10. Pass intercepted by Juhas. Feeds Patterson. He is going to draw the foul as she tried to go to the rim. Kendall Wingler, I believe, got called for that one. 55. So for the second time in the ball game, check that, they call that on McLemore. And uh, for the second time in the ball game, Ayanna Patterson will step to the free throw line. Patterson being from Indiana, this being such a historic building, and, and I thrilled to play, and I asked her if she'd ever played here before. She said, no, nothing. But she said, I came to both games where UConn played here and loved it. And she's right now playing her best basketball in a UConn uniform, so maybe it was just a little bit of coming home, magic of Hinkle. Yeah. Bunch of family and friends are in the crowd for her tonight. So Betancourt and Patterson go back to the bench. The starting five back in. Going to be an offensive foul called there. Going to be on Sidney James for second. Another uh, illegal screen foul. I'll tell you what. My man works the <laughs> officials better than anybody. Lopez Seneschal with the pull up. No. Juhas on the floor after couldn't get the rebound. Up and rejoining play. Rachel McLemore. Team leader in scoring and assists. Passes inside. James draws the double team. We'll kick it back out. Edwards steals the pass. End to end for the finish. I mean, there's not many players, 6-4, who can do what Aaliyah Edwards can do. That was an incredible play, stealing it and running it down, picking it up and finishing. That was a one-two play, wasn't it? No doubt about it. Macklemore guarded by Lopez Seneschal. James comes, sets the screen. They make the switch, now it's Edwards. Macklemore will shoot the three over the top of her. That is eight of the 15 points for Butler, scored by Macklemore. Lopez Seneschal for three, no. And nobody there for the rebound except Shea Frederick for Butler. James over the top of Griffin. That doesn't go. So far, UConn 0 for 6 from 3, so they'll get it in the paint. Well, yeah, pass. in a game like this, you really don't need to shoot a lot of threes. Get the ball in the paint, down to that low post. They have been dominating against a very undersized Butler front court. First points of the night for Dorothy Juhas. Ten to shoot. They get it back to James in the post. Back outside to Frederick. She'll put a three up over Juhas and hit it. Well, you know, UConn is switching on a lot of screens. And I thought they did a pretty good job communicating, but Juhas still got stuck guarding a guard. So that's six now for Frederick. Griffin driving, cut off, and that is going to be a travel. So, uh, the subs for UConn in Ashbet Court will come back into the ball game. Nika Mueller will go to the bench. Reminder that associate head coach Chris Daly is running the show for UConn tonight. Gino Oriema traveled with the team to Indianapolis. He was at the morning shoot-around, but uh, this afternoon didn't feel... Uh, up to his best and decided to, for the team to get its best tonight. But maybe he'd sit this one out. Chris Daly, 15-0, running the show. 
pressure to stay undefeated. Yeah, she doesn't like being reminded of that, does she? Which is why I, I remind her as often as I can. <laughs> That's Kendall Wingler with a three from the corner. So a nice run here by Butler. Uh, they closed from 12 now to seven behind, a 6-0 run over the last uh, half minute. Foul inside as Griffin tried to get that pass. That is going to be Caroline oh, Strandy oh, get called oh, for oh, her oh, first. Well, I told you Butler shoots the three ball. That is kind of the strength of their offense. While UConn is the top three-point shooting team by percentage in the Big East and one of the tops in the nation, Butler's not far behind him in the conference. Yeah, they're perfect this quarter, three for three. Lopez Seneschal will get called for an offensive foul. You know, it's funny. The Butler coach was telling us before the game that when he got here, they hadn't taken any charges. Yes. So I yeah. think he's got to be pretty proud that that kid just stepped up and took a charge. Get knocked out of bounds and will remain with Butler, but we get to the media timeout halfway through quarter number two. Leads down to seven for UConn. Butler on a bit of a heater here in quarter two. I can say we planned it, yeah. but we did not. Sometimes you gotta be lucky. So Huskies had as much as a 15-point lead in this one. Now Butler on a 6-0 run, and the lead is down to seven. You know, I think Butler, you know, they're making their shots, which... Austin Parkinson told us that they've got to make shots, and I don't know if UConn's defense is at the same intensity level that it needs to be. Starting five back on the floor together for UConn. Shot clock down at six, and wide open underneath. Caroline Strandy got away from the defensive switch. Yeah, lack of communication. And give Butler credit. Taking advantage. Five third lead. Leah Edwards draws a double team, kicks it out to Juhas. Aubrey Griffin cuts and a nice pass, a recovery and pass from Dorka Juhas. But it all started too inside from Aaliyah Edwards. She knew she was double and, and triple teamed. She skipped it to the other side of the floor. And a steal, but couldn't pull it in. did do was give Butler a refreshed shot clock, although they're going to stop and have a look at that because I don't know that possession ever really changed hands. But that's what they'll talk about for a minute. Kevin Pethel, Brandon Enderline, and Tiara Cruz, the officiating crew here tonight at uh, Butler. Four minutes of game time away from halftime. Chelsea Sherrod and Carol Walters have all the first half highlights and analysis on the UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Show presented by Duncan coming up in a little bit. So they will set the shot clock at 25 and play resumes. Bulldogs have hit three of their last three from the floor. They've outscored UConn 15-10 in this second quarter. To this point, Nika Mule with a steal. And ahead of the pack. Mule had six points from Mule. That was just old school, staying in a stance, active hands, and strip it. Mule guarding Shea Frederick. And the switch inside to Taylor. Guarded by Edwards. Step back from Strandy. That's a tough play. Is that rim, backboard, rim, and in? It's a, you know what? You get the home court roll. Nice shooter's touch. Four points now for the junior from Racine, Wisconsin. Transfer from Minnesota. I like that decision by Aubrey Griffin to not shoot that ball. She'll shoot this one. Just a little bit too long. Even that one I thought was better. They moved it a little bit. You know, you got to, I don't like that first shot. Unless you're really feeling it. Frederick cut off by the much taller Juhas. Chloe Jeffers loses the ball. Griffin scrambles for it. Gets fouled. Gets fouled a second time. <laughs> what hustle by Griffin. <laughs> She is so quick. Look at that. I mean, 
And don't forget, this kid had back surgery last year. Yeah. Missed the entire season. And, you know, for some people, that first reach results in a lot of fouls. Aubrey seems to have a really good knack for with that, that quick reach. Ball. Yeah, she's, she's incredibly athletic, but also intuitive. Has great instincts. She's just a joy to watch. So Griffin in this one with six points, three of four from the floor. And a rebound. And a couple of steals, too. That is going to go off Lopez Seneschal and then bounce off the feet of Trinity White and Butler into a lot of bounds into the Yukon's ball. Right in front of the Butler bench, they were all thinking it should be going the other way. Thank you. Yeah, that's good call. You got to try, though. If yeah, like sure. Bench, why not? That's part of the game, right? Yuhas. Newell was cut off. Steps back outside. No. Yuhas with the rebound. Wow. What an athletic reach and put back. It was a 6 5 reach, yeah. right? Wow. That was good stuff. Two minutes to go. Quarter number two here at Hinkle Field House in Indianapolis. Back running down. Here's Strandy. Griffin was there to block the three. Two and one. Won't get it off. Husky defense. Able to create that turnover. One of the keys to the scoreboard looking like it does in this game so far is that UConn has dominated offensively in the paint. 26 to 6 points in the paint in this game. Lopez Seneschal for two. And Aaliyah Edwards is down on the court, got tangled up with Trinity White in the aftermath. jog over to the Yukon bench, though Ayanna Patterson is quickly up to check in. They're going to take a look and see if that was a two or three for Lopez Seneschal. So you can see Edwards cutting in the lane. She was hit by 32. Oh. Okay, so maybe that's what they're looking at versus the two or three. They had to see if there was a, a foul. And, and is it intentional or not? Right. They, they signaled as the shot went up that they were going to review that to see if it was two or three. But then uh, further action ensued. So we'll see here as uh, a stoppage with a minute and a half to go. As Brandon Enderline and Kevin Pethel are looking at the monitor. See 32 there. Seemed to get her right in her throat. And our crew is going to let us know what's going on. All right, a potentially unobserved intentional foul. Correct. Is the language which used. Is, which is what we were exactly the play we were showing you. Yeah. Determination had been made. And we'll get that determination. Ball All right, let's say incidental contact. And so Butler will inbound the ball underneath its own basket uh, with a minute and 30 now to go in this second quarter, trailing by 11. I mentioned Leah Edwards out of the ball game and Anna Patterson back into the ball game for UConn. Griffin on James. Strandy. Gonna call a pretty touch foul there on Aubrey Griffin. That'll be her for first. You can see that UConn has stepped up their defensive intensity a little bit. Chris Daly not happy with that call. Something to watch to see if that intensity continues with not the starting five on the floor. One minute, one minute. Patterson way out deep on McLemore. Steps back, throws up a three, no. It's 
so it'll be a foul on the floor underneath. Fouls on UConn, number 10. And it's going to be on Nika Mueller. I think she was, yeah, I think she was holding the kid's jersey. And I think she might have just given the kid the stink eye as she came <laughs> in on the ball. Just saying. <laughs> Lots of uh, players grab kids' jerseys. You just can't get caught. All right, less than a minute to go. Shot clock at 10. Here's James on Mule. No. Rebound by Griffin. Lopez Seneschal cut off. She'll feed a wide open Griffin who launched the three, and that's UConn's first made three of the ball game. It's incredible. They had missed their previous seven attempts. So Aubrey Griffin up to nine points. Aliyah Edwards leading the way for UConn with a dozen. On the Butler side, Rachel McLemore has eight of their 25 points. And the shot clock now at five. James doesn't see it. McLemore will heave a wild shot at the buzzer, and that is how the second quarter is going to end. So after UConn had a 15-point lead and Butler closed it down to seven, UConn goes on a 7-0 run in the last couple of minutes here. And at halftime, it is a 14-point advantage. Huskies 39 and Bulldogs 25. ZD, just when you think you've seen it all, your kids are facing yet more adversity. How proud of you are you of the way they responded that first half? Well, you know, I think Nika said it earlier this week. You know, I, I think there's not anything that surprises us and we're prepared. And uh, I, I was really pleased with our effort. Uh, gave up a little too many threes. But um, uh, overall, our defense was great, and we hit the offensive glass some, so pretty happy. Yeah, about the offensive glass, how about the work of Aaliyah Edwards? She was unstoppable. Yeah, Aaliyah's been a, a, a one-man wrecking crew on the offensive glass, and we're trying to get other people to participate. Dorka got in there a little bit, and Yana, uh, but, you know, you can't say enough for Aaliyah's second and third effort. Okay, thanks, CD. Good luck, right. second half. Thank you. Associate Head Coach Chris Daly running the show tonight for UConn. Our interview with CD presented by your Tri-State Cadillac dealers. Well, we're at halfway at historic Hinkle Fieldhouse. Huskies leading Chelsea and Kara are next with the Halftime Show. Well, after Butler made a run in the second quarter, UConn's lead is 14 as the teams return to the floor to start quarter number three with Megan Kumo. I'm Alan Bestwick. Maria Molino joins us again shortly. Well, the star of the night so far, if we had to pick it now, no question who that would be. Aaliyah Edwards was a force for UConn in that first half. She was unstoppable. I mean, she did a little bit of everything, and it's her relentlessness that was really fun to watch. But every time she got the ball, she knew what she was going to do with it. She went with the purpose and she went strong the jumper from the elbow has become so consistent her offensive rebounding was incredible and on the defensive end active I mean this is an, an amazing play for a 6-3 kid just incredibly talented and was completely dialed in tonight look at those numbers 12 points six of eight from the floor of the eight rebounds four were offensive glass plus he's got three assists and that steal to go along with it and an area that UConn should dominate in this game they have so far and that's in the paint and that was Parkinson's biggest concern was how they were going to defend UConn in the paint yeah. and wisely UConn got the ball down low as often as possible in that first half so Huskies have possession to start the third quarter it's Mule Griffin Juhas Lopez Seneschal and Edwards the five on the floor for UConn. Lopez Seneschal for three, and got it to go. She was cold in that first half. I think it's a good thing for UConn's, you know, their mentality to have Lopez Seneschal knock down that first three. Maria talked with Butler coach Austin Parkinson on his way out of the locker room. What do you say, Maria? 
That's right, Alan. I said to him, you know, what'd you tell your team for the second half? He said, pray. And then he said, just kidding. Um, but he said, you know, UConn is huge, but we can't be giving up what he called those touchdown turnovers. He noted the 16 points off of turnovers, Alan. Yeah, and he calls a quick timeout to start this third quarter after Dorka Juhas creates the turnover and gets the run out for the bucket. 44-25 Huskies early in the third. Butler head coach Austin Parkinson not liking what he was seeing from his team out of the locker room to start this third and giving him a good talking to in the huddle. This turnover and steal by Dorka Juhas led to the timeout. Well, just good active hands by Juhas. The biggest player on the floor running the break, and you, you can see, I mean, he's competitive, and, and yeah. he wants his kids to compete. And it's the little things, you know? Like, did, did he necessarily expect to, to come out here and beat UConn today? Well, maybe not, but there are certain things that he knows his kids are capable of, and he's just trying to change the expectations. Like every coach, you want to see effort, you yeah. want to see focus, yeah. intensity. All the way to the rim, that was McLemore. Rachel McLemore, the grad transfer from IUPUI, came over with Coach Parkinson. She's the first Bulldog into double figures with 10. And by the way, if you're asking, those not familiar, IUPUI, as that goes into UHAS, had a strong finish. IUPUI is Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. <laughs> Thankfully abbreviated frequently. Yeah, it's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> but he had a tremendous 12 years there. Took his team to the NCAA tournament two times in the last four years. Well, would have. One of the tournaments was canceled. That's a thrown away pass. It'll be a turnover to UConn. He's an Indiana guy. Uh, played at Purdue. Four-year player. And he's uh, from uh, a basketball family. His dad is Purdue's all-time assist leader and a member of the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. He's the grandson of... Uh, Jack Parkinson, who is a member of the Indiana and Kentucky Basketball Halls of Fame. Grandpa played at Kentucky. I would love to sit at those dinner tables back in the day, right? Wouldn't you, though? There's Lopez Seneschal. That's a two. 9-2 in this third quarter for UConn. Nice start shooting the ball for the Huskies as well. And here's uh, Leah Edwards again with another steal. And score. 14. Yeah, what an effort there by Edwards. But UConn really locked in defensively. They've come out here with a different purpose in the second half. Acklemore on the switch had Juhas guarding her. There's Dowell. Tries to get it inside. It slips away. And will be a Butler ball as Mule touched it with a foot of the end line. Aaliyah Edwards. That's the anticipation at its finest. And then the athleticism to finish. Remember, she's 6'3". And another steal <laughs> with that athleticism. Can she catch up to it? Yes. Of course she can. <laughs> she can do everything. <laughs> oh, style on the finish. Underneath and reverse up. And another Butler timeout. Well, UConn, an 8-0 run over the last uh, minute and 26. And Aliyah Edwards starring again to start this second half. A couple of steals and a couple of scores. And watch this finish. Hello. That's fun. UConn up to its largest lead of the ball game at 25 over Butler. The Aaliyah Edwards show of these uh, opening moments of this third quarter has been a large measure of the reason why. You know, she's done a little bit of everything on both ends of the floor, but it's been her defense that has been so impressive. The anticipation, stepping in the passing lanes, but here, that's just effort and wanting it more. Tracking it down. And the reverse, I, I've just been so impressed with everything about her game. Not only this season, but tonight in particular. I love that last far right number there. Three steals in the game to go with all the offensive stats. And don't forget, four of her eight rebounds have been offensive boards. Great game for Edwards tonight so far. Diana Patterson into the ball game for Dorka Juhas. And 
Butler has already used two of its three timeouts, and they haven't even barely played three minutes in this uh, third quarter. Sometimes you got to make these teaching moments what they are. You got to take advantage. Trinity White's going to draw a foul. And Aubrey Griffin with kind of a wild throw it at the backboard attempt. Aubrey Griffin, another one who's had a great night for the Huskies. Nine points. And so here is Trinity White shooting the first free throws of the night for Butler. And only the second of her season. Not that UConn shot a whole lot. They've only shot three all night so far. <laughs> Very clean game where that's concerned. White, a second-year player from the Dallas area. Spent a lot of time in this Butler starting lineup a season ago, though coming off the bench this year under Coach Parkinson. And so a 13-4 advantage in this third quarter for UConn on the scoreboard. Patterson sets the screen. Mule steps back for three. Hit both sides of the rim and popped out. That's the first missed shot by UConn in this third quarter. There's Wingler driving. Patterson comes over and cuts her off. White. Wingler again. They call a foul inside, I believe, on Lopez Seneschal. Her second. Substitution for UConn. So Ines Betancourt comes into the ball game for UConn as Aubrey Griffin goes to the bench for a rest. Second time we've seen Betancourt into the ball game. The only player on the UConn bench we haven't seen yet that's active is Amari DeBerry. And the Caroline Deshaun not in uh, town in Indianapolis with UConn after getting hit in practice yesterday. She's gone on concussion protocol. There's Shea Frederick with a long three. No, Patterson skies for the rebound. And it's going to be a foul as Mule was undercut in traffic. Mule was working so hard in that low post. And it was Kelsey Taylor, the uh, Butler player who got up slowly off the floor, who gets called for the foul. So, uh, just uh, tying up some of those stories. Oh, we'll watch the foul first. You saw her get thrown there, Nika Mule. So Aubrey Griffin comes back. Caroline Deshaun not going to play tonight or Thursday at Xavier. No easy fun tonight, though she is here with the team and did participate in warm-ups, did not participate in the game prep area of shoot-around this morning. Lopez Seneschal misses on the long ball. And, of course, no Chino tonight either. Coach here with the team. As Frederick is cut off, that'll be a travel. Coach in Indianapolis with the team was present at shoot-around this morning. Uh, decided he was uh, under the weather and that this team would be in uh, good hands with associate head coach Chris Daly tonight. And of course, we wish Caroline and Gino and everybody hoping they feel better. Even some members of our crew. There's a steal. <laughs> Trinity White with the run out as Betancourt. Oh, and she missed the layup and then fouls Betancourt. She wants a redo. That's so frustrating. We've all been there. Anyone who's played, that's happened. It was a terrific steal. Nice anticipation. She just short-armed it. The last thing you want to do, though, when you make a mistake yeah. is to compound <laughs> it by committing the foul. Yeah. Nice cut by Lopez Seneschal and a good feed. Lou's got 11. Uh, we, we look forward to having Eddie Warman back with us as well, a key member of our UConn basketball team here on SNY, not with us tonight. There is no truth to the rumor that results in a particular basketball game last night were the cause of his absence. <laughs> Big Rutgers fan, our boy Eddie. Shot from the corner. No, that was Dowell that missed the three. Betancourt will handle the ball. Mule is looking at her like, hey, oh, oh, over here. Didn't get it. Aaliyah Edwards will top of the key for two. Edwards. That is 18 for Edwards in this one. Talk about stepping it up defensively. UConn has held Butler scoreless within the last four plus minutes. 
Here's Dowell guarded by Edwards. Taylor. Now Wingler. No. And right to Mule. She'll push the pace. All the way to the rim. Patterson with the rebound. Blocks and draws a foul. Let's check with Maria. Hey, Alan. Well, one top five recruit in the class of 2023 is in the house tonight, Ashlyn Shade. I spoke to her, and she said, with her, UConn will get versatility. She doesn't fit in one specific spot. Feels like she can plug into wherever the team needs. She's also excited to join forces with Ayana Patterson. They played each other in high school a few times over the years when Patterson was with Homestead and Shade with Noblesville, both not too far from here. Yep. Uh Anna Patterson and uh, Ashlyn Shade, basically the two best basketball players coming out of the state of Indiana in the last two recruiting classes. And they have both landed at UConn. And here's Patterson now on the back end of her free throws. But Aubrey Griffin gets the rebound. Interesting to see Betcourt handling the ball and Mule playing the off guard. Shot clock at three, two. Griffin throws it up. High glass, got the rim, but didn't go in. And there's going to be a foul on Juhas on the rebound. Well, now we're in the middle of a long stretch of consecutive UConn games on SNY. And our next one will be Thursday night. We'll travel down the highway a couple hours to Cincinnati to take on Xavier with the Huskies. Our coverage begins with the pregame show at 6.30 p.m. only on SNY. I don't know how you grow a mustache like that. It's impressive, nonetheless. Molly DeBerry into the ball game now for UConn, and that shot kind of acrobatically made by Rachel McLemore over the top of DeBerry. That's 12 for McLemore. So Mule, Juhas, Griffin, Bettencourt, and DeBerry. As Griffin gets away and puts it in with the left hand. And a perfect pass from Juhas away from the defense, exactly where Griffin needed to go with the ball. Double figures for Aubrey now. 11 points, 5 of 7 from the floor. Juhas and James from Butler having a good physical tussle for position. The Berry gets a hand on the pass. Griffin ahead to Mule. Protects the ball and floats it in. Nika Mule with eight tonight. Huskies outscoring Butler 21 to six in this third quarter. Remember Butler had outscored UConn for a time in the second quarter. Then the Huskies roared back at the end of the second period. Now a strong third here from UConn. Wingler for three, no. Griffin with the rebound. She'll run. And go end to end for the finish. Aubrey Griffin now 13 points to go with four rebounds on her return it to looks, action. It looks effortless. Steals to go with those prior stats I mentioned for Aubrey Griffin. Going to be a foul inside on Bettencourt. How about our take it to the rim moment brought to you by Duncan? That last one from Aubrey Griffin, a pretty good one, huh? Well, she ripped down the rebound and then was off to the races. Pretty incredible with the ball faster up the floor than other people without the ball. So the foul on. Betancourt, that was her first. Lopez Seneschal back into the game. Mule goes to the bench. They're very aggressively guarding Frederick out by the... And then she's trying to say, get back. Someone, a guard, got to take her. Yeah. <laughs> Juhas knocks the rebound away. Saved inbounds. Good effort by Dowell. Kicks it over to Strandy. Misses the shot. Dowell has the ball fall right to her for the rebound. Strandy drives. That's a push off. Oh, they're going to call a block on Lopez Seneschal. 
Fendi had that arm out there in front of her, extended. But uh, they'll call Lou for the block, and that'll be her third foul. So Caroline Strandy will go to the free throw line for Butler. She is a junior from Racine, Wisconsin. Played her first couple of years at Minnesota. And already in her time at Butler has more total points than she did in her two prior years in Minnesota. And gets the free throws there. So that snaps a 6-0 UConn run. But still a 30-point Husky lead. Because Seneschal looking for Betancourt. Now and she'll he, find yeah, it very. You saw her calling Betancourt. It could have been a lack of no, a real knowledge of what to do. Betancourt doesn't get in a lot. Nice play, though, right? Lou to DeBerry, right into the paint to uh, Juhas. One and down, throw it inside to Dorka. Double figures for Dorka now. Ten points. That defense by DeBerry. Or rather by Griffin, wow. Do you think you're gonna outcook her? You might have to rethink. There is White, no, Juhas with the rebound. Betancourt will look to push. Lopez Seneschal into the corner to Griffin for three. No. And the very got muscled aside on the rebound by Taylor. Final 10 seconds of quarter number three. Butler coach shouting out to his team. Here's Strandy. She'll throw it up, blocked by DeBerry. And at the buzzer, Taylor threw it up and it doesn't go. At the end of three, Butler 32, UConn. Well, UConn holds Butler to single digit scoring in that third quarter. 64 32 is the Husky lead. Back at Hinkle Fieldhouse, Paige Beckers before the game. She has done this in every stop we've gone, whether it's Gamble Pavilion or on the road here at Hinkle. The young fans that come out, she spends time with them pregame. She's, I think she made all four corners of the court. <laughs> She's a great ambassador. Yeah, and great to see. Great to see her interacting with young kids. She understands uh, her place with the sport and uh, the platform she has, she likes to say. Good deal. So Becker's watching on and supporting her teammates as they lead by 32 on Butler. <laughs> there you go, see? <laughs> Perfect. Uh, check of our game reset presented by your local New England Honda dealers as we go to the fourth quarter. Uh, UConn being led by Aaliyah Edwards with 18 and 8. Aubrey Griffin also into double figures. Rachel McLemore leading the way for Butler. Look at the points in the paint, lower right-hand corner. Dominated by UConn, Huskies also out-rebounded the Bulldogs. 25 to 13, Butler held to 18% shooting in that third quarter. They shot two of 11 from the floor and 0 of six from three by the UConn defense. Well, I'm sure that there, there was a focus at halftime to, you know, get a hand in the face, contest the threes, and, and UConn has certainly stepped up and tightened things up defensively. Shot clock down at 10. McLemore guarded by Edwards. Looking for somebody to go to. Shea Frederick got three. Missed the three. DeBerry gets the rebound. So it's DeBerry, Mule, Edwards, Lopez, Seneschal, and Betancourt, the five on the floor for UConn to start the fourth quarter. DeBerry will put up the three. Missed it. Look at Aaliyah Edwards dive for that ball. How about that effort? They are leading by 32, and she's diving for that loose ball like that. Oh, what a competitor. That's something. That's unbelievable. So nine to shoot as uh, UConn will have the ball on the alternating possession arrow. Nika Mule to inbound from under the basket. They'll get it to Edwards. Just wanted to shoot. Stopped. Betancourt works off the screen. For our three. No. And rebound. Nice positioning there by Trinity White for Butler. That is Dowell for three. 
Tenley Dowell, the senior from Wharton, Illinois, five points on the night for her. Good T by White to knock that away. Nika Mule saw the pass coming, got a hand on it. She gets up, though trailing the play, and is uh, just fine. So she'll handle the ball here. That's going to be a big foul called inside. And they are going to call that on Dowell for Butler. Double foul. Double foul. Yeah, I call a foul on DeBerry and Dowell. So a double foul there. UConn will inbound the ball. Ten to shoot for UConn. Get it into the paint to Edwards. A turnaround and the nice floater into the bucket. That's 20 for Aaliyah tonight. Get the ball into Edwards and something good will happen. It's kind of been the story of the night, hasn't it? Well, it's been the story of the last month, month and a half. There's McLemore for three, and it goes for Butler. She's got 15. Tough shot by McLemore with Griffin in her face. Averaging 11 a game. Her season high is 21. Get it into Griffin in the paint, draws a double team, a triple team, knocked away from her. White will get it to McLemore again. Let's that fly, no, and the rebound right to Mule, who will slow it down. Smart play by Mule. Mule will drive all the way to the rim and draw a foul and contact. Don't forget, coming up uh, after the ball game, we have our post-game show, and then a new episode of the Gino Oriana Show, presented by Nissan, tonight after post-game coverage, only on... SNY is a show featuring and all about the coaching staff of the Huskies. Associate head coach Chris Daly, Jim Elliott, uh, Morgan Valley. I think you had a great line earlier when we were talking about the coaching staff. You said basically they've got three head coaches behind Gino. <laughs> they do. Chris Daly's been, you know, the associate head coach for years here. And Morgan Valley was a head coach at the University of Hartford before coming over here, and Jamel Elliott was a head coach at Cincinnati for nine years. So they have an unbelievable staff, and at the last minute, to, for yeah. Gino to not come to the game tonight didn't feel well. You know, they, they haven't missed a beat. Just like the players have had to adjust, the coaches yeah. have had to adjust in a lot of things, and, and, um, and yes, haven't missed a beat. It certainly hasn't been easy at times. The one thing that's great about Gino, the way he is a boss, he leads oh, 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 Nika Mule with the block. Ball saved in bounds. Butler got a fresh shot clock out of it. That's going to be a turnover. Travel. So Gino gives such autonomy to his staff, and, and that pays off in moments like this when, you know, he, he allows you to do what you need to do, and he encourages you to be your best, and he doesn't micromanage. And he and Chris have been together every step of the way, and obviously Morgan Valley, Jamel only had played for him here. They all know each other very well. Lopez Seneschal works the Yuha screen, and that was around and out. Thirty-point UConn lead as we approach the midway mark of quarter number four here. At Butler, there's James guarded by Patterson. Patterson got a hand on that. Maybe? No? Well, Chris Daly <laughs> was trying to say three seconds, but she shot the ball. It didn't hit anything, and she caught it in the air. I didn't think you could do that. And that is a three-pointer from outside that goes for McLemore. There's a strange sequence. Oh, Aubrey Griffin and Nika Mule on the same page with just a glance at each other. Such a good back cut and a, a terrific pass. So timeout called. As we get to 5.38 to go in quarter number four. 
Buell looks at Griffin. Griffin says, yep, I got you. And gets the bucket for UConn. Here's your scoreboard halfway through quarter number four at historic Hinkle Fieldhouse. What a pleasure it is to come to this building and uh, see a basketball game, work a basketball game. Of course, uh, made famous by the movie Hoosiers about the 1954 Milan High School basketball team that back when every school in the state played in the same tournament for the state high school basketball championship came in and upset one of the big powerhouses of the time to win the state title. And of course, that tournament played for so many years here in this building, and they shot so much of the movie here in Hangle Field. It is, it is without a doubt the coolest arena that we, we've gotten to travel to. And for basketball junkies, this is it. It's a lot of fun. There's Rachel McLemore for a long three. That will be Aaron and chased down by Aubrey Griffin. So Griffin... Mule, Juhas, goes strong to the rim, will draw the foul. Patterson and Betancourt on the floor for UConn. Okay. Maria is uh, been keeping an eye on the Indiana kid, Ayanna Patterson. That's right, Alan, and she told me being a freshman comes with ups and downs. It's a learning process, understanding at times. She needs to just watch Dorka Juhas and Aaliyah Edwards play, take that in, and try to do what they do on the floor. But she said the main things coaches have told her are to bring energy and to be patient when she gets the ball. She's eager, but she said the world's not going to end. No need to rush it. <laughs> And she had just the biggest smile on when we asked her about playing here at home in front of family and friends, right? Maria, she had a big crowd of family coming and uh, the chance to play here at Hinkle uh, in front of that family and play for UConn here. Big thrill for her tonight. Arguably her best game of her young UConn career. Yeah, I I'd second that. Shot clock at 10 for Butler. They get her inside. Taylor guarded by Patterson. Did not get the shot to go. Betancourt to a running Griffin. Kicks it to a wide open Mule who drains the three. Nika Mule into double figures scoring tonight. That's 13. Six assists. Four rebounds. One foul. I feel like it's habit we had that throw on line at the end from the last couple of years. There's Dowell, and got that to go from just beyond the free throw line. Tenley Dowell, seven points tonight for the senior from Morton, Illinois. Four minutes to go in this ball game. First of a uh, roadie double header as Dorka Juhas takes the three. That one is too strong. Rebound tipped into the hands of Griffin. And a timeout for subs called by Chris Daly to get Amari DeBerry into the ball game. Coming up, Chelsea Sherrod and Carol Walters have a full recap of tonight's game. Plus, here, Chris Daly's post game news conference. It's the UConn Women's Basketball Post Game Show presented by your local New England Honda dealers right after the game. And then, of course, we'll follow that with a new episode of the Gino Ariama Show. Griffin can't track that one down. And a UConn turnover there. So Nika Mule just went to the bench, presumably for the final 346, 13 points. I uh, mentioned that just a second ago. Lula Lopez Seneschal also on the bench for UConn with 11 points. And a run ahead for Patterson. And points at home in, in, in Indiana. Or should I say back home in Indiana? Is that more appropriate? I think, he, I think she's happy either way. <laughs> I think there's a song that goes by that title. It's pretty famous in these parts. Three-pointer from Shea Frederick. She's up to nine. Butler held to an offer from three in the third quarter by UConn, but they've got hot again from beyond the arc in the fourth. Actually have outscored the Huskies by one point in this final frame. Here's Patterson with a fake and then draws the contact. On That's on James. That's going to be it for her. And Aaliyah Edwards comes back into the ball game for Dorka Juhas. 
And apparently that's Jane's fourth. I must have marked an extra one on her side of the scorecard at some point. So Ayanna Patterson will step to the free throw line again for UConn. Six points, two of two from the floor. <laughs> and got a home state That's bounce a home on that roll one. For sure. Looking over the score sheet for UConn tonight. One area, a uh, bright spot. Definitely cut down on the turnovers in this one. Yeah, they did a much better job. Now let's see with Nika Mule out of the game if they can take care of the basketball the last three minutes. Deberry with the rebound, and now Betancourt will reset. Patterson defended by two, and will get called for the offensive foul. That is Dowell who takes the hit, and that's Patterson second. One area I thought if you really want to pick at UConn tonight, uh, the three-point shooting was off the mark. A team that's one of the best in the nation at shooting from beyond the arc, only shooting 15% from three uh, as of the last time out. That's not good. Nope. <laughs> two for 13? Nope. But, you know, you also have to, to look at, they've got 78 points, and they were so successful in the lane. I think that's more the focus. Yeah. Well, like I said, if you want to pick... And this is the pursuit of perfection, Absolutely. right? Isn't that the whole the whole vibe? Absolutely. Two minutes to go. Patterson, double team, draws a foul. And that will be the fifth on James. So the Huskies go from here two hours down the road to Xavier to play Thursday night here on SNY. Then back home against DePaul. Then uh, going to play St. John's at the Islanders' new arena at Belmont Park, UBS Arena. A week from Wednesday, and a home date against Georgetown before traveling to Seton Hall. All of those upcoming games here on SNY. So Sidney James is out of the ball game, fouled out, and here's Patterson back at the free throw line. Keeps getting that friendly roll. I counted three bounces before that one went down through. Well, uh, the first and third quarters for UConn again tonight. The strengths of the team. Yeah, they could, they come out hot, and then they've they've proven to come in into the the game in that third quarter after halftime equally as hot. It's been impressive. Outscored Butler 20 to eight in the first quarter. Outscored him 25 to seven in the third. There is Kendall Wingler. No, and DeBerry gets a rebound. DeBerry and Bettencourt have not scored for UConn. Otherwise, all the other players that have been in the ball game have points on the board. DeBerry gets it stolen. Bettencourt with nice defense to cut off. Good footwork. And the long ball goes right back into the hands of Kelsey Taylor, and DeBerry is going to get called for a foul. Ayanna Patterson is also rubbing her mouth and nose like she took uh, a little hit, too. Kelsey Taylor, the line here. So uh, the plan for UConn will be to uh, spend the night here in Indianapolis. Then they'll get on the bus tomorrow and travel down the road, down uh, I-70 East to uh, Xavier. Beautiful Cintas Center awaits. What a, another great venue, though. Th this one of historic, that one a new one with all yeah. the latest bells and whistles and flash. Great spot to watch a ball game, too. And a Kelsey Taylor, grad transfer from Division III Trine University. Getting points on the board for UConn. I mean, for a butler. So a minute to go in this one. That'll be stolen away, and there'll be a foul called as DeBerry tried to pull in the pass. Oh, foul will be on Strandy. So UConn going to go to 12-2 and two on the season, 5-0 and oh in uh, Big East play. 
and they will remain unbeaten against Butler as the teams meet for just the fourth time. As Dorka Juhas comes into the game for Ayanna Patterson. Who continues to check the uh, the chicklets in front to use a hockey statement. So mentioned uh, trip to St. John's coming up for UConn. St. John's with some more work to do before they meet the Huskies, but possibility that Joe Tarnabella's team could be undefeated when UConn heads down to Queens. Butler, go out of bounds off UConn and be Butler's basketball. See Patterson check in there. Took a shot. Looks like a little blood on the towel. One minute, one minute. And we go into the final minute of the ball game. Still a, a successful night for Patterson on her return home to Indiana. Nine points. Which is one shy of her season high for UConn. Remember, she played a lot of that Maryland game. Got a call to Barry for a foul there. She didn't like the call, but... We heard it over here. We heard it, all, we heard it over, halfway across the court, yes. But uh, this night is going to be all about Aaliyah Edwards and her performance for UConn. She started the game strong. She's led the Huskies tonight in points and in rebounds. Assists. She's had uh, Nika Mule will lead the team tonight, but... Edwards is right behind her. She has been a force for UConn when they've needed her. And how about Edwards, 10 of 12 from the floor. Nice D there by DeBerry. Straight up block. Rebound will go to Juhas. And Betancourt will slow it down as the shot clock is off. And we go to the final 20 seconds of this one here at Butler. So the UConn defense holding Butler to 35% shooting from the floor through the game, out rebounding the Bulldogs in this one by a 35 to 20 margin. And remaining undefeated in Big East play, UConn beating Butler by a score of 80 to 47 tonight in Indianapolis. What a dominant performance. Chris Daly goes to 16 and 0. Leading the Husky squad tonight in Gino Oriema's absence. And so it's uh, UConn now at 12 and 2 on the season. Our player of the game tonight, presented by CSCU, just has to be Aaliyah Edwards. Look at the numbers for Aaliyah Edwards tonight here in Indianapolis. The junior into 20 points again. Look at the shooting percentage from the floor. They're just shy of a double double. Murray Marino standing by now with Chris Daly. Coach, it seemed like your team came out of that halftime with such energy. What did you say to them? <laughs> Not much. Um, we've, we, in some of our past games, we had a lead in the first half and came out a little slow, but they just jumped on them to start the third quarter, and that really set the tone for the second half. Aaliyah Edwards had her seventh 20-point game this season. What has she meant to this program, both tonight and all season long? Well, I, you know, I didn't even know about the 20 points. I just keep thinking about all the hustle plays that she made and all the second and third efforts, and that's what's setting her apart. The 20 points, I think it came easy because I didn't even realize she got it, but I just think her hustle, her effort, her relentlessness on the backboard, those are things that we, we she's the one that brings that for our team. You also got Aubrey Griffin back. How much did that help? It helps with the rotation. I mean, it's just been the story of the year. We got one back and we had lost one, which would have given us another perimeter player. But we tried to do a better job with getting guys in and out and trying to balance out minutes. But I thought everybody did a good job and played well. Chris, thanks and congrats thanks. on the win. Thank you. Thank you. Alan. All right, Maria, thanks. We're a lot of UConn fans here in Indy tonight, as always, and they watch their Huskies put up another dominant performance. More to come from Hinkle.